first march and leading the Sabres below again. This time on Laguna 42. The weather is bad as always in March. Uh, channel leading out of the Les Sables de Lon Marina. Oh, look at this nice boat. Nice green boat. Golden Globe regatta just uh, finished here. The French guy won. So we are exiting Les Sables de Lon in Biscay Bay. And we go here. This is Guillaume. And weather is, can say, perfect. Our new captain, ready to hit hard in Biscay. Mm -hmm. Boat, which is on a collision course, but with the aid of ice, which is a good system, we know that there's not going to be any problems. So after two hours, not much has changed. We're still doing a very good progress, around seven knots. Not much wind. I guess it's time to do lemonade. Let's squeeze a few lemons. We don't want to get any screw boot, right? The wind has dropped, we have less waves going to the sunset, not much going on. But I want to show you why Biscay Bay is so famous. So, if you see all these small marks, this is all a wreck. So, you go around the map and all these small spots, see this and this and here and here and another one and here, these are all wrecks. The first warning, and uh, we just put the sails up. One reef uh, main for safety. We have around 15 to 20 knots of wind, and it's a little bit choppy here and there. We've done around 90 miles from the Sable de Lon, and we are on the course towards uh, Guillaume. And these waves, probably not seen on camera, but they have a few meters, but they are pretty nice. Now it's time to do some tea, green tea to keep us awake. The second day is slowly coming to an end and we have a beautiful sunset. We're not cooking much, even making a tea is hard, everything is spilling. So my dinner for today is gonna be sardines with bread came up and we are getting really close to Guillaume and very strong winds are gonna hit Biscay so we stop here for one day and then uh, go around the Finistiere on the two days I guess this guy is making some strange noise not an engine but we expect propeller or something so we have to take care of that so that's why we are just using a single engine now but that's fine we're still doing five and a half knots. We're about to enter Guillaume. We just crossed Biscay and it's a great place. I'm here for the first time. And the hospitality of this marina is amazing. <laughs> it's just a nice and beautiful town. This is the exit from Guillaume. It's a huge wall protecting this city from Biscay Bay. Pretty big waves, a huge swell, it's 20 knots of wind, but the waves are huge coming out from the Biscay. We are around uh, 50 miles from a Coruña. It's really gusty winds going through the well, it's small. I sail with a reef and engines. The engine problem is only propeller sinking. We've got now up to 45 knots gusts. It's all coming across these mountains from the valleys. It's hard to see on the camera, but it's all boiling. Corona 
Catalonia and here we have two marinas and the best thing is that the wind dropped now to 17, 18 knots so we're kind of afraid we won't be able to work. I'm not sure how we enter this berth. It's super narrow space with side winds. But it seems like now we are work pretty well. And of course it's raining. How's it looking? It's always raining and gusting when you have to park in small spots like this. But we made it. So, La Coruña in rain. And our boat still in one piece. Leaving Coruña, we refueled. Spent two nights here. It was too windy outside. It's gonna be the last port in Spain. The next one will try Gibraltar if the weather holds on. At 700 nautical miles in one go. And five knots of wind. Next to Marina, Coruña. And that's just next to the Finistiere. So the next leg is gonna be all the way here. Down to Gibraltar. Let's go for some good winds. 27 knots from behind. Just one engine with a little bit speed. And we are exiting Coruña and going towards Finistiere. There's a net in the water. We we'll like nets. If the nets get in the propeller, then you have to dive in this cold water. We're rounding uh, Cap Finistiere, the very famous cape. And in a few, one hour, the wind should shift and we should get 50 to 20 knots from behind and finally sail like we're supposed to. And you can see down there, end of rain, better weather coming. But we go down there, it's all black and rainy and stormy. Finally we are sailing, we have 27 to, 12 to 30 knots of wind We have two reefs on the mainsail and half of Genoa or maybe even less And we are doing really good, 7 knots, up to 8 knots surfing So let's just hope this wind stays for as long as possible That's a free ride Sailing along the Portuguese coast there is a border between uh, Spain and Portugal. It's really good uh, in the morning when you get the sunrise because during the night you don't see the horizon, it's all dark. Hard to orientate yourself. But in the morning you just get the energy. You don't see much traffic around, so there's only one boat down there. But when you look at the ice system, you see that there's loads of traffic around us. Got some wind and we're under full sails. Sailing towards south. There's only two of us on this trip, which means uh, we change every three hours. So you rest a little bit, three hours on watch. You rest a little bit, three hours on watch. Uh, this is my cabin. This is the back cabin of the lagoon. And I'll show you. I have the most beautiful window you can imagine. And a beautiful view. All for my cabin. And then there's another one in the back. So we can see what's going on in the back. And there's more. There's one on the top, so I can watch stars. And then I even have my own bathroom. There's a toilet, mirror, another window, and a shower, huge shower. And then this forward, it's another cabin, but it's just full of stuff. And this is the saloon with a beautiful 360 view here they are, exit 7 this guy is still dancing it's not hot enough second round while well, the first round is getting disappeared is it good? oh it's fantastic I never heard I would be a fantastic cook 
He has to be very hungry. Another sunrise. Today is the day nine. And I have just sent the location to my webpage so friends and family can follow us. Pretty cool machine. We are getting close to kind of a Lisbon. Lisbon is here. And these are the first islands we see on this trip. We could use more wind. The wind just came back, so now we're under full sails. One engine, just a little bit of help. And we are doing really good. sitting on this seat for so long that it actually got a shape of our butt okay we just hit 10 knots again surfing down the way these boats are really good doing this very stable they just surf and that was in 22 knots of wind really good really good okay 11.3 knots plenty of fertile dolphins and they're all going with us they're here now in front some majestic cliffs it's hard to see this on the camera but this is really absolutely Fantastic, spectacular, amazing. I've been making a lemon juice for me and for Yure. And yesterday he figured out, hey Igor, we have loads of oranges. Why don't you make an orange juice? Yes, of course. Bonjour, monsieur Yure. Vodka jus d'orange, s'il vous plaît. Est-ce que c'est bien? best we are getting close to the mediterranean you can feel the sun the smell gibraltar down there tomorrow 24 hours so africa is just behind the corner i think it's the best time to test this net it's a little bit salty yeah that's pretty good after 10 days Finally a day to chill and relax, get some energy. Another beautiful sunset. And we are getting to Gibraltar in 20 hours. It got super warm. The water temperature is 18 degrees Celsius and we're in shorts. It's amazing. Europe, Africa, Gibraltar, perfect sunset. And we have a tide with us and we have a full sail. This is Africa, and on the other side, this is Gibraltar, the rock. Gibraltar, the big rock. We're gonna get some cheap fuel here, follow the price. We just anchored here in Spain, next to the rock of Gibraltar. It's a nice sunny day, and we're gonna have one night rest here because the winds are going to be better tomorrow and uh, not bad here 
It's not bad at all. And this is Gibraltar at night. Just left Gibraltar and we go towards Sardinia. 700 nautical miles. If you're lucky, we get there in one go. And here it is. Gibraltar. And down there somewhere Sardinia. All these squares, they're actually all cargo ships or big boats around us. Loads of them, and then you can zoom in, and then you see in the harbor of Gibraltar, like millions of boats. We came from Gibraltar, and now we go up, and everybody seems to be doing the same thing. Marina Ibiza waiting for the fuel dock to open and then we refuel and go to Cagliari, Sardinia. There's an old city and the castle, the pizza. And on this side it's the marina. There it is, an old town. We've been eating so much eggs, so we need a difference. And today we're gonna make scrambled eggs. We added some Parmesano, yeah, no salt, just eggs and Parmesan. And it's amazing. You should try that. Another beautiful morning. We've been sailing now for a few days towards Sardinia. And there's really not much wind. We've been motor sailing a little bit. But it's cold. It's really cold. A lot of moisture. We got something on propeller, we failed vibrations. We felt some vibrations and they're like dun 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 and it's usually always something on the propeller. So when you feel it, it's good to know. When you feel some strange vibrations, just put the engines in natural immediately and then you have to dive uh, you can check you know even if something is on the propeller it might fell off like it did today because we saw some big net on the propeller but it fell off but you still have to dive because there might be some leftovers and it they might get to the seal and the oil could leak and you destroy your sail drive so whenever you feel these vibrations stop the engines dive even if it's freezing, if it's night, it doesn't matter. You have to dive and check. We haven't met a boat for one day, I guess. And there's absolutely nothing. We're in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's probably 1,000 meters deep here. And there's just nobody around here. Absolutely nobody. This is our small boat. This is Africa. This is Spain and this is Sardinia and we're just in the middle of the Mediterranean. We're pretty serious about the safety on this boat. We have a really good uh, life raft in the back. We have these uh, safety lines all the way around the boat where you can uh, hook in so if you fall off the boat you're gonna be dragged behind the boat. And here we have a... There's a light. When it turns around, it goes on. See, so it falls in the water, turns on. And here's also the, the horseshoe. It's on the line, so you throw everything in the water, you pick up the person. And then we have uh, these uh, life jackets, which are self-inflatable. And this is the hook you hook for the line I showed earlier. And we added these small lights. So in case you fall in the water, they turn on automatically. So in the night, you know, your uh, position. And then we have this uh, handheld VHF for extra safety. We have the big one, but this is good to have uh, in any case. 
And then we have this uh, small machine, which uh, we are sending our position on my web page, and also we can trigger an SOS button via the satellite, via Iridium, so we can call for uh, help, we're in distress. And then we have, we have uh, flares and stuff. So this is the big package for offshore, so we have two smoke bombs, uh, this sh and the rockets, probably good to have. We have the big first aid kit, this is the ocean first aid kit. And uh, then thermal blanket, in case you fall in the water, you put this on after you come out of the water, it's gonna heat you up quickly. Then we have these fire extinguishers. We have uh, three of this, two kilo. This is an overkill, but it's always good to have more fire extinguishers than it's really necessary. And then of course we have some more first aid kit. So for the emotional troubles, you use Nutella. For stomach problems, we use Scotch whiskey. Engines, 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 and my ears are slowly gonna explode from these engines. The same noise all the time. Oh, it's pretty nice. Finally made it to Sardinia. And there's an army boat down there. Sunset in Sardinia. And we're gonna anchor just behind this corner in here. Sailing towards Cagliari. And we have loads of wind. It's very windy, it's 30 knots and some very short wave for another 8 miles until we get to the Cagliari but then we take a new crew and then we go downwind Cagliari, you went home and I'm waiting for a new crew Marina. But it's gonna be good because once we turn down towards Sicily, it's gonna be downwind for the next 24 hours at least. This marina is really cool because there's so many interesting boats. They're not just high production boats, but really all kinds of old interesting style boats. That's what I really like. We just left Sardinia and we have 30 knots of wind up to 8 of knot of speed only under Genova and we just got a new crew we have 3 new crew members so now it's gonna be very easy to do night shift and the rest of the crew is having a lunch already uh -huh. we're under sail all the time we're not going fast because we don't want to get too early to Palermo we want to be there in the morning to refuel and then go to Lippery Island it's four of us, so we made four shifts and I actually slept uh, six hours in a row first time since two weeks or something it's pretty good and we have new maestro doing some great and food Jamie Oliver is a beginner we are flying towards Palermo, Sicily we're gonna be there early early morning and we have really good speed, we're doing 7 knots, or even up to 8 knots. We had a great sailing from Sardinia to Sicily, but now we're approaching Palermo, we have 10 more miles to do. And we just got hit by the headwinds up to 25 knots, hitting directly into the waves. This marina is amazing. They're not gonna charge us for one day because they just they're just not gonna charge us because they're so nice. We're gonna take some water 
and afternoon we're gonna leave towards uh, Messina Strait and then to Croatia and this uh, Lipari Islands are a nice place we were here two years ago rented scooters went around nice place and Stromboli the volcano is just a little bit further north nice place you can already feel the Mediterranean smell here it's nice and dry so the summer is coming Here's our nice boat and before we hit the sea we're gonna go to town to get some pizza of course we're in Italy we eat pizza <laughs> yeah. leaving Lipari Island a beautiful place but pizza was terrible it's terrible pizza what a nice place we'll be back but not for pizza. We have all these sophisticated navigations, electronic devices, compasses, but we don't really need because Miha just got an idea. <laughs> How do we navigate? You just go directly to the wind and it's always the same. As long as you have to go like zero degrees to the wind. And that's always the right direction. <laughs> it's so simple. We crossed uh, Messina Strait during the night. We had four knots of current from behind. We were flying, so we are now here at the at the toe of the Italy. We came close to shore, so the waves dropped significantly. We have anchored here in a sheltered place, but still we have 25 up to 30 knots of wind. And we're gonna stay here for five to six hours, and then we might be able to round the peninsula. I put track on the GPS. And you can see very clearly if you're drifting because now we're just going left and right but if we drift we would go backwards so it's very easy to notice if the anchor is slipping after one day of going up wing with engines crashing into the waves we are finally sailing and doing a really good progress finally we made it around the italy now we are in the Otran, that's between Albania and Italy. The passage, not so narrow but famous. Oh, dinner is ready. And waves are ready too. Bon appetit! This is the day 25. And this is the last sunrise we're going to see on this trip. And this is the last moon we're going to see on this trip. It's down there. It is Croatia. It's Lastovo, the island. And it's beautiful here. It's really beautiful. And if you haven't, if you haven't been sailing in Croatia yet, is the number one seriously you have to come here this is the place to go sailing we made it one mile left to go in front of us split croatia our final destination it was a long trip 25 days 2600 nautical miles a long trip the weather was not very favorable, we had loads of headwinds, quite a lot of sea, and eventually we're here, Croatia, a beautiful day.